Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. We are so happy that you have joined us and we just know this is going to be a wonderful and a very blessed Sunday for you as we go through this lesson which I have prepared, but also knowing that we are a spiritual community still connected even though we are not physically in contact, we are in the ethers. So we just hold that truth. Before we get started, I wanted to mention Papa Charlie here. Uh, I got some uh, information, I had people calling me and saying that the mask Papa Charlie was wearing was covering up both of his eyes. And I'm here to assure you that both of his eyes are wide open and the mask is not covering his eyes. So if the camera doesn't pick it up, please just know that Papa Charlie is doing just fine and I have an eye on him. So he's going to keep an eye on us uh, during this lesson. I'd like to open up with an affirmation uh, from Wings of Prayer, and Wings of Prayer is a affirmation, a healing and a prosperity affirmation that I do every month based on old uh, daily words. And the affirmation I pulled is from 1942. It is, mind, nerves, and emotions are controlled by the dauntless spirit of Christ. Just think about mind, nerves, and emotions are controlled by the dauntless spirit of Christ. Let's just breathe into that truth and let us know right now that we are rooted, that we stand firm in this presence of the one power, one presence, one substance, and one life, knowing that we cannot escape from it. We surely would want to, but also knowing that we are protected and that we are absolutely safe. So as we do an opening prayer, let's just breathe into that truth again and know that the dauntless spirit, which is that ageless Christ spirit within us, leads us on our path as we move forward during this Sunday service, but also in the upcoming week that we will be living through. And if you believe this truth with me and affirm there is only health and prosperity, only life and only light and illumination in our lives. If you join with me with our mantra that we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is, amen. The daily word for today is world peace. The affirmation is, I contribute to peace in the world. Powerful thought. When I learn of conflict in my community or my world, my response may be frustration, sadness, or even anger. If I have those feelings, I remember that I am more than a mere human. I am a living expression of God, heir to all that God is right now. I use my divine faculties of wisdom, understanding, and love to create the abiding peace that is my birthright. Centered in divine peace, I realize that every person is as much an expression of God as I am. The, difference, the differences dissolve in a way that transcends human understanding. I come to know oneness with all the world's people. I let this realization shape my response to every person in every life situation. In an awareness of my oneness with all people, my thoughts, words, and actions contribute to peace in the world. And from the New Testament, the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 22. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one as we are one. And if you'd please join me with the affirmation. I contribute to peace in the world. What a powerful thought. And we all contribute to that peace when we have remembered who we are, when we know that we are dauntless spirit, and it's our birthright, and we can claim it. This morning, I'd like to share with you some thoughts, and this is from Judge Lynn uh, Toller, and it is, and I love this one. If I waited until I had all my ducks in a row, I'd never get across the street. Sometimes you just have to gather them up 
gather up what you've got and make a run for it. So, and I think sometimes in life, we can spend a lot of time planning and planning, but we need to be in the move. We need to be in the flow of life. This morning, we're going to be talking about a very powerful psalm, probably one of the most famous psalms of the Jewish scriptures, which is Psalm 91. There's something very mystical about this psalm. Not only has it been recited for centuries, but it also has been known to be a very protecting psalm, that when these words are spoken, it goes out into our aura and creates truly a field of energy around us that we are protected. And I'm, we're going to go a little bit deeper into really the meaning of this psalm this morning. But I want to first uh, share some history about this psalm, and this is Psalm 91. In my research, I found most Jewish scholars believe this psalm was written by Moses and was written on the day of the completing of the desert tabernacle. This is when they were out in the wilderness for 40 years. And it is believed that with that is when Moses had these words downloaded to him. And again, Moses' tabernacle experience and being enveloped in a divine cloud. And metaphysically, we know that's being in this aura of energy, of protection, of a shield, knowing that this presence of God is something that's real and tangible. It's very energetic. Uh, interesting, too, Psalm 91 is recited seven times during a Jewish burial ceremony. It's a very uh, prominent psalm with the ancient Jewish and Hebrew people. And I want to remind all of us that all the psalms are best understood from the indwelling God perspective. So when we go through this psalm, I want you really to drill down into the deep depths of your soul and realize that even though these words were written by Moses, now some uh, scholars believe David did some editing to it, but we really don't know, and it actually it really doesn't matter. What matters is what we have is what we're supposed to have. But as we go deeper into this psalm, let it truly saturate us and let us marinate in this energy. I also found this very interesting, too, that Edgar Cayce, the famous seer, that when he'd fall asleep, he would uh, give revelations. He actually said that Jesus led his apostles through Psalm 91 after the Last Supper because he wanted his apostles to be protected on Good Friday, that there would be no harm that would come to them. It was Jesus' time, and it was not theirs. And I thought it was very interesting for Edgar Casey. Before we go into the psalm, I want to share some thoughts, and this is from Yogananda. Not only is this psalm known for Christians and the Hebrew and different faiths, but Yogananda was very, uh, very fond, and he realized the power in reciting and truly dwelling and praying and meditating on this psalm. And so Yogananda says... One who finds within himself that, quote, secret place of the Most High, unquote, becomes sufficed with supreme happiness and divine security. God's kingdom is within you. What a powerful thought. And here, this is a Hindu sage, and yet he knew truth is truth. No matter who has spoken it, truth is truth because we're dealing with spiritual law. This scripture applies to our souls, the secret place of the Most High. And what is the secret place of the Most High? It is the thoughts we have. It is the wonderful unity and sweetness of peace that we feel when we truly are in that sacred space within our own souls. These words remind us of the highest realm of divine protection is truly within our God union. The only way we can really be in that presence and get the impact of truth is to be in the oneness of that God presence and allow that energy to flow through us. So from Psalms 91 verse 1, we live within the shadow of the Almighty, sheltered by the God who is above all gods. And I love this verse, especially the end, because it says, God who is above all gods. At the time this was written, the Jewish people never said that they had the only God understanding. But the Jewish people believed that Yahweh or El Shaddai or Elohim or any of the words that they used to describe this presence, that there were other gods out there. They never denied that. And I think this is something that has been lost through church history through the centuries. They believed, as for the Jewish people, 
though, that this was their God. This is the one that they were called to truly be in relationship with. So what is this dwelling place of the secret place of the Most High? What it means is we do not come out of this place to meet troubles and distress. It also means we abide under the healing shadow of the Almighty. And I love this version that I picked, uh, the first, again, that psalm, it says, we live within the shadow of the Almighty. Think about that. It's not something separate from us. It's not something we go and visit. It's not something that comes and leaves, except if we try to consciously think we're separate, which we know cannot be true, because we live in absolute oneness. So abiding within this Almighty good, we know that we are protected. We know that God is our king or queen power forever. The kingdom of God is within us. And really, when Jesus said that phrase back in the New Testament, he was really referring to this understanding that Moses had. And remember, Moses was that great spiritual leader. He was a seer. He could not only a seer, but also a prophet. But he could see that when we are rooted in a high understanding of truth, we live differently. We live from a consciousness of truth. And we know that we are protected, that we truly are one with the one, one spirit, that dauntless spirit. From Psalm, Psalms 91, verse 2, this I declare, that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I am trusting him. This is very vital, because if we believe in this presence, we have to act as if we have to act as we know. We have to go forward believing the truth that we know to be true. And we have to declare this, and we declare this by believing, by reciting these ideas, by taking these ideas into our meditation time, doing them or creating mantras in our own mind when we're driving somewhere or if we're doing something or if we're outside on a walk, to allow this truth to truly roll over and over in our mind so it truly can impact our subconscious mind. And truly, our soul can allow a flow of truth to flow from us. We also know that this power is a law, and it's a strong fortress. And even though they use the imagery of a fortress, a fortress is within our soul. Our soul is where our fortress is. We don't go to some outside building or castle. The fortress, the fortress is within us. And really, we've always been there. But we've been asleep to this power, this presence of the Almighty. It's not an outside force. We know it's a God consciousness. So where's your God consciousness this morning? Are you rooted in a fortress? Do you re truly stay in that castle, that interior castle, and know that whatever happens on the outside, especially when in these coronavirus times, that you are protected despite any appearances? You are protected. You truly have refuge in the law of truth. We know that this is the inner Lord. This is an inner knowledge. So when we're distressed or we feel uncertain, let us go into prayer, which means we go into our own soul self, and let's refine this Lord presence within us, this powerful creative presence that truly we live and move our, have our being within this intelligence. That's truly what Psalms 91 is telling us. You see, doubts and anxieties and fears are snares we are delivered from if we abide in this vibrational place. This refuge is a vibration. Every thought, every feeling, every image that we hold creates a vibrational grid which goes forth to create our aura, which becomes again our field of attraction. This is the power of metaphysics. But if we have doubts and anxieties and fears, those are snares. And we know if we are at that frequency, frequency we will magnetize. We will magnetize like for like, because that's the law of cause and effect. So by reciting the psalm and thinking about the deep knowledge that it is conveying to us, we truly lift up our vibration. We truly can be a part of the evolutionary consciousness of truth. 
like to share a, a true story with you. Now, there are a lot of stories about the, this Psalm 91. During World War II and also World War I, there are many truth teachers that took individuals into prayer, even though they didn't realize that they were being prayed for. And whenever this prayer was recited, because there's a lot of documented truth uh, about this, is that no harm came to them. And if the individual they were praying for, if they did get shot, that somehow it would hit their belt buckle or somehow in amazement it did not penetrate them. So there's a lot of fascinating stories about the power of this ancient psalm. But the one I picked is a more recent one. And this is the story about Jeff. Jeff B., and he was from Wyoming. Uh, he, and he was due to return to Iraq. This would be his third tour of duty. Jeff was brave and a very capable young man. He was an, uh, actually a special forces commander. Uh, Jeff was Sam's son. Uh, Jeff felt strangely vulnerable about returning to Iraq. Sam, the father, hadn't worried over his first two tours of duty. But when Jeff called him, Sam realized he wasn't sure if he'd ever see his son again. You see, the dad, Sam, picked up there's something, something vibrationally that was not right. Sam realized that if he was going to see his son again, he must do something. And I want to share with you, sometimes we go through times which they call karmic vulnerability which we have maybe close calls. And I think it's very important to this story. It doesn't mean that we meet our doom at that time, but it means that we are less likely to avoid a catastrophe, meaning we miss a car accident, meaning that something horrific we just missed. And that's what we're talking about, karmic uh, vulnerability. And that's when you really need this psalm. Uh, since Jeff was ordered back to Iraq, Sam needed to strengthen Jeff's aura and faith with tools which Jeff would accept. You see, uh, Sam was a very uh, devoted student to Yogananda. But Jeff was uh, from Wyoming, and he believed in only Jesus Christ. Nothing more, and he was not truly into metaphysics. Uh, so Sam put Jeff on his prayer list at his church, but also Sam told Jeff about the soldier psalm, which is another name for Psalms 91, and its protection. And Sam gave his son a suggestion. You notice he gave him a, a suggestion. He didn't say you have to do this. It's a, just a suggestion. He said he was leaving for a few days, but... Even if he could get his men to recite this prayer, he was t telling his son, Jeff, about all the miracles that have happened during wartime with this. So what's interesting about this story, as we learn, is a few days later he left for Iraq. But Sam found out that Jeff even got most of his troop to recite this prayer every day before they went out into the field. And this is interesting, too, because most of the men, or really all the men Jeff was with, were all special force men. So, but I'm going to get back to that story, but I want to keep continue moving on with the power of the psalm. So Psalm 91, and this is verse uh, 3 through 4. For he rescues you from every trap and protects you from the fatal plague. He will shield you with his wings. They will shelter you. His faithful promises are your armor. Again, we're tapping into an armor, and that armor is an energy field. It's not an armor made of steel or iron or any kind of metal that we find here on earth. It's a spiritual armor. And we know that within the soul, when we are truly rooted and based in the truth of unity and oneness, we are protected. Turning from snares in everlasting love. When we are in a snare or we're having a plague or we're having a difficult time, we turn within. We go within to the great within. And that is what this Psalms 91 is talking about. And we find that this great within, this almighty which we're speaking about as this presence of God, it's really the presence of absolute love. And that is the shield and also becomes our buckler, meaning that it protects us, keeps us standing straight up keeps us in the place where we need to be, but we're still standing where we are in faith and strength and deep wisdom. These defenses are not uh, speculations. 
This prayer doesn't say, well, if you dwell in the Most High, and if you kind of understand a little bit of what I'm talking about, this prayer is really a prayer of faith. It's a prayer of mantras. Truly, any of these verses which we read here, if they're recited together or individually, can be a powerful prayer practice for each and every one of us. And even though maybe we're not going out to a war zone someplace, we can use them wherever we are in any of our life situations. And because we're dealing with truth, they're not speculations. They are what is, what shall be, and what will ever be. It's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. This is true. This is such a truism of the power of the presence of God. See, everything in this third dimensional world, it has a lifetime and it dissolves. Nothing in this dimension lasts forever. But when we hit the fourth dimension, that higher frequency and vibration, it, we're dealing with eternal truths. We're dealing with a different dimension. And that's really what this Psalm 91 is doing, is bringing these truths into our third dimensional world and allowing us truly to think differently. So Psalms 91, verse 5 through 6. Now you don't need to be afraid of the dark anymore, nor fear the dangers of the day, nor dread the plagues of darkness, nor disasters in the morning. Let's let that go. No matter how our day is going on or what we are fearful of in the future, let us stop being afraid. Being afraid is a vibration that brings us into a lower frequencies. We have a multitude of thought tribes within us. All of our thoughts metaphysically can be likened to tribes of people within us. Some of those tribes we need to release because they do not serve the, serve the high frequency of our true Christ heritage. You see, when we live from our heart, we live from a zone of absolute security, absolute peace. So what we want to do is clear out any and all mixtures that are not at that frequency. So what we're talking about really in this psalm is really soul perception. And what it is, is when you are in the frequency of Psalm 91, you see air and you re respond differently. You don't, re you don't just react, knee-jerk reacting. You respond differently. And what happens again at this frequency, we know and we prove nothing can hurt us. Nothing can hurt us. We truly are daughters and sons of this most high God presence. Psalms 91, verse, uh, this is 7 through 8. Though a thousand fall at my side, though ten thousand are dying around me, the evil will not touch me. I will see how the wicked are punished, but I will not share it. When we are in this power of the psalm, when we are truly rooted, we are living in these words, we are protected. And so and metaphysically, all these air thoughts that we have surrounding us, you may think, well, what are those? Turn on the TV. You can hear it all the time. Because we really don't hear a lot of news, we hear a lot of commentary. But when we are again in this, this abiding presence, we see things differently. We truly can make our way through where we need to go to be protected, to be in total safety. 10,000 fall at our right and at our left. No matter where we are, no matter our circumstances, this psalm can take us into a different direction. This Psalm 91 gives us new eyes to see with. We see with spiritual eyes. We have spiritual hearing. We truly are in a different space. And I want to finish up that story with Jeff. Weeks later, Jeff called from Iraq and called his dad. And he said, Dad, I need a new watch. His dad replied, what? I just got you a new watch. What happened? Jeff said, I'll have to explain later. Turns out when Jeff returned home, he told the story to his father. Jeff led his group on a mission that day, going door to door in a very dangerous area looking for terrorists in Iraq. Suddenly there was an intense firefight in a tight alley and shooters were above him on the rooftops too. Miraculously, only one soldier was killed of his troop. And again, any loss of life is a tragedy on the battlefield. Uh, Commander Jeff was out in the front and that's where he would normally be leading his men. He was that kind of commander and that kind of soldier. They were taking cover behind one of their trucks and during the excitement, the driver reversed the truck uh, right onto Jeff's wrist instead of going forward. So what happened is Jeff was pinned there and he couldn't move, he was stuck. When Jeff 
would have thrown himself into this intense firefight. He simply had to lay there because he couldn't do anything because he was pinned underneath the truck. This is called a karmic moment. Jeff's, uh, Jeff's watch got crushed, but his arm was okay. Jeff was kept out of harm's way. Jeff showed great God faith by reciting this Psalm 91 before uh, they, his whole troop went out into the field we, when they were going to do any work as a group. You see, life is a school. We barely understand truly the lessons that we're moving through. God's law knows the full score. Jeff is really living proof. Now, as a special force commander, would he want to say he was in this situation, he was pinned? How did he know the driver would go in reverse instead of going forward? But karmically, that is where exactly Jeff was supposed to be. And that's what happens when you recite this psalm. Things truly change around you. Things are energetically changed. It, we magnetize things around us in a different way. And he accredits it to this uh, reciting of Psalms 91. Again, Psalms 91, verse 9 through 10. For Jehovah is my refuge. I choose the God above all gods to shelter me. How then can evil overtake me or any plague come near? So are you willing to stand up? Are you willing to find your own Jehovah within you? Are you willing to find the secret place of the Most High, that almighty consciousness, which we call the Christ consciousness also? We can be delivered by re reciting this psalm. Our lives can be changed by truly doing a devotion to Psalm 91. Because this psalm gives us some interesting truths. Truth goes into our minds, it transforms our thoughts. Truth goes into our body consciousness, and it changes the cell's structures. The cell structures of our very body change. And all this can happen by reciting the Psalm 91. And again, Psalms 91, this is verse 11 through 12. For he orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. What a powerful thought. They will steady you with their hands to keep you from stumbling against the rocks on the trail. We all are going to have challenges. And remember, metaphysically, uh, angels represent divine thoughts. We always have divine thoughts. And if we are true, true students and we do our prayer meditation, we do our prayer and meditation, and we keep doing our prayer and meditation, we have angels, these divine thoughts and ideas come to us in our moment of need. So we're not fearful. We're not afraid. We should not be afraid. See, we're living in a kingdom of great honor and of great riches. We truly can have the life that we choose, again, if we choose. See, the golden parts of this kingdom are truly ours to relish and enjoy. In Psalms 91, verse 13, you can safely meet a lion or step on, a poisonous, uh, on poisonous snakes. Yes, even trample them beneath your feet. Metaphysically, what it's saying, no matter what is in our path that we have to pass through. And sometimes we go through paths where we are going to a tight place or a, tr a tight ravine. And we come across things that we can't back up got to go forward. We know that we can rely on the safety of this holy presence. I am, God is, because God is, I am. That truly sums up the power of this psalm. We know that this God presence is within us and as us. Truly, we are one with infinity. The dauntless spirit of truth is within us. Knowing God is an everlasting presence, he delivers us and honors us and takes us along this path. This protecting energy is com completely recalibrates our souls. Completely recalibrates our souls. In from Psalm 91, verse 14. For the Lord says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. I will make him great because he trusts in my name. Remember the word name means nature. So again, do you believe in the truth that you're reciting? Do you believe in the truth that you read? Now, if you're going to read this Psalm 91 and not really believe what it's saying, then you might not get the energetic effect that you're looking for. But if you really go beneath the words and allow the words to dissolve within your consciousness, you will see a change. You see, in this presence, we have great love, we have great faith, and absolute confidence. Only universal good 
Remember, God is another word for good, can come into our lives. And I'd like to do the, our last uh, Psalm verse, which would be Psalms 91, verse uh, 15 through 16. When he calls on me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble and rescue him and honor him. I will satisfy him with a full life and give, uh, give him my salvation. Remember, salvation is liberation. All of us want to be liberated from limiting ideas. Anything that limits us, that restricts us, that puts us in a mental straitjacket, we want to get rid of. We want to cut ourselves out of it. And that's what Psalms 91 can do. No one can work out their salvation except them, the individual who is wanting to work it out. We alone work out our own salvation, which means we have to come to our own understandings within us. So, do you really understand Psalms 91? I invite you to pull out your Bibles or Google it, pick a version of Psalm 91 that really speaks to you, and allow it truly to become part of your prayer practice. And I'd say not just for a week, let's do it for four weeks. And let's see if the power of this psalm does not change your life. See, the knowledge of this presence truly awakens us to the sons and daughters of the Most High God, which we already are. But again, we fall asleep. And reciting this psalm, taking a verse a week, maybe just take a verse a week. What does it mean to you? What can it mean to you where you are in your own life? That's the power of metaphysics, and especially by taking such a powerful psalm like Psalm 91 and making it our own, making it truly our buckle, making it truly our robe of honor which we carry. And I'd like to end uh, with a, a thought from Myrtle Fillmore that fits so appropriately. Myrtle Fillmore said, knowledge that there is one presence and power all heirs take flight, and we cannot be harmed. We cannot be harmed if we have remembered who we are. And even though we go through situations that we don't like, that bring us frustration, that we really are not happy about moving through, the key is to keep moving forward. The key is to truly be in this presence Every single day, not just again on Sunday, but Sunday, Monday, Thursday, all hours, whether you wake up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, to know that this presence will guide you. So again, knowing this truth, Myrtle shares with us those powerful ideas. No harm can come to us. My prayer for each and every one of us this Sunday is no matter where you are, no matter what you're dealing with health-wise or financially, may you know that Psalms, uh, Psalm 91 can lead you in the direction of truly not only victory, victory, but also a victory where you're moving forward, you're not stuck. And remember, this castle is within us. It's our very soul. So I'd invite you again to take this Psalm 91 into prayer this week. And I encourage you to take it verse by verse. I'd encourage you to read it from the last verse to the first verse. Do anything that brings this text to life within you. And I'm here to say that you will find God consciousness. And that's truly what we're here to do. We are here to awaken to this divine understanding. May we truly live this week in the shadow of this almighty presence. Thank you, and God bless. And now I would like to do our love offering. This is the time in our service where we do our love offering, our tithe or our gift. And I would invite you, whatever your gift may be, to hold it. Put your energy signature into it. I also want to say you can go to unityway.com, and you have our mailing address there. And also, uh, you can there's ways that you can donate electronically. And I want to say thank you so much for all the individuals who have supported us. And because by supporting us, we're able to support the Vista Irrigation Water District and also sdg &E. But we are so grateful for all our donations and blessings. But again, take this gift, whatever it is, and it's not the amount. It's the energy that you're imbuing it with. And if you recite with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And let us seal this, seal this gift, knowing that it goes forth to not only bless Unity Way Church, but it goes forth into the Unity Movement, it goes forth into the world to bring blessings and blessings and blessings. And may we also imbue it this morning with Psalm 91, that it will bring safety and it truly will be a blessing in ways that individuals can't even imagine.
Thank you so much. And now our prayer uh, of protection. May we recite this and truly know that we're not only saying this for ourselves, but we're saying it for our entire, not only our country, but the whole world. And let us know that when we say these words, these words live in the ethers and they can be tapped into. So let's truly say these words from a really deep, a deep abiding place within our own souls. Let's say it from the space of Psalm 91. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, and have a very, very blessed Sunday. God bless.